Hi, I'm CJ with GoDaddy here with Joe Sario. Did I say that right that time? Were we good? <laughs> Let me uh, just have you start and tell me, I know you were on the panel, they were talking about fear, right? Sorry, Is that the panel you were on? All right, so let's just hear you tell me what your take on that was. My take on fear, my take on the panel. So we had a great time doing the panel here, the FreeCon uh, Freelance Conference. It's the first time I've been involved with these folks and it was, it was a lot of fun. It was really great, great audience, great speakers. And we did a panel on fear and about fear in your business. And the funny thing about, about fear is that there's fear in every aspect of it, right? Oh, can I pick up the phone call and make that cold call? What if they say no? What if someone yells at me? What if I don't get the contract? What if I get the contract and lose a contract? And in our heads, we have a lot of this, what does it say about me? What does it mean about me as a person? What does it mean about me as a business person? So we talked about a lot of those issues on the panel today. And you know, part of the things that we talked about, and I had mentioned the, the four questions that are really key to thinking about fear, managing fear. And one question is, who am I? Who am I? Second question, what do I want? Third question, how am I going to get it? And we have to really think about those questions specifically. You know, not just, oh, what do I want? I want to have money. You know, it doesn't work that way, right? Because there's a lot of fear behind each of those things. And the fourth question, which is one I heard recently, which I love, it's stuck in my head now, is who has my money? Who has my money? So that way I think about, am I marketing to the right people? Am I going after my money? Am I succumbing to fear and doing Facebook and social media and watching television and all this stuff at home and not really running my business? So I want to know, what do I want specifically as possible? How am I going to get it as specifically as possible? Do I want to make money? No, I want to make X number of specific number of dollars a year. Do I want to be successful? No, it's too vague. We really have to get specific. So that's some of the things we talked about on the panel and uh, talking about methods and tools and techniques to counter fear. And so what initially brought you to the conference, though, to, to get you to this place now? Uh, I know Elijah May. Elijah May was the, was the moderator of the panel. He's a great guy, successful, smart, clever, imaginative. And he said, you know what? You wrote a book on fear. So why don't you come on my panel and let's talk about fear. And my relationship to fear is long standing, my whole life. You know, one of those people who grew up with a lot of fear. I do a lot of training and speaking now that fear figures into everything I do. So I speak on leadership time management, I speak on emotional intelligence, and those are things that fear is the foundation of a lot of that stuff. So for example, talk about business people, freelancers, if they have procrastination, a lot of people say, oh, I'm a terrible procrastinator. Guess what? Procrastination is based on fear. The fear that I can't do this, I may not be good enough, what if it doesn't work? And we find other things to do to protect ourselves from having to face that fear. Uh, the bottom line, though, is when it comes down to it, we have to face the fear. And so we create mechanisms and tools and techniques to get ourselves out of that fear space and say, look, I acknowledge that I'm afraid. I know I'm afraid. So let me, let me think through this for a minute and get back into the action mode instead of the stuck in my head and fear mode. Because when we focus on the fear, we bend it and stretch it and we create it into this big monster that doesn't actually exist, right? It exists in our heads and we think it's real. And then we follow that path and the decisions and choices we make after that are based on what we think is real, the fear, but it's not. So we have to change that dynamic. Do you find that people don't sometimes even realize that it's fear that's driving them, that they're just, they think it's something else, like you're saying the procrastinating thing, and they don't even realize it until they recognize the, the signs that you might be telling them about or something that you're teaching them about? Yeah, it's an awesome point, right? You bring up a great point. Because so much of it, if we haven't slowed down to say, what's happening here? What's happening in my life? Why am I not making more money? Why am I not happy? Why am I not serving my clients better? And you, you say, well, I procrastinate a lot. Okay, that's not enough. Let's go down a layer. You know, what's a procrastination about? Oh, because I'm really afraid. I don't know how to use a software program. To, to write an invoice. I really don't know how to write this grant proposal. I really don't know how to do this job that I told them in the meeting I can do, right? And, then, and now we're stuck in all this ball of fear, and what happens? A lot of costs, right? A lot of costs. People don't think about this. The social cost of fear, 
the health cost of fear, right? What do we do? We procrastinate. And we say, oh, honey, I know we, I said we go out to the movies tonight, but I have so much work to do. Well, what you don't tell your wife or your husband is that you had that work for three weeks, right? And then there your spouse gets upset, and now you, you promise to go out with me, da, da, da. And, and we end up breaking promises because we procrastinated the whole schedule away, the whole deadline away, and we tried to do it the night before. Right? Health costs. We get nervous. We have ulcers. We have all these things that are driving, right? And there are, so there are a lot of costs of fear, procrastination, lousy time management, all that kind of stuff. Quality, especially if you're rushing, you miss the quality of something's not going to be as good because you're rushing at the last minute, too. Yeah, there's an opportunity cost. With fear and things like procrastination, perfectionism, whatever, there's an opportunity cost. Awkward pause. Um, so, so if you, I survey a lot of my audiences. I'm a full-time speaker and trainer. I do keynote speeches. Uh, I do a lot of training, and I ask my audiences, if you had a report due a month from now, when are you going to start it? And they tell me what you think they tell me the night before. I said, OK, if you finished it two weeks early, and your boss says to you, oh, you're such a good worker. That's awesome. Or you know what? This isn't quite right. You still have two weeks to fix it. Or they say, hey, this person's a go-getter. They finished their report two weeks early. That's the person I want to give the promotion to. Except we don't think that way. We think we're pulling one over on the, on the man, right? Oh, I have a month. I'll wait 28 days to start it. And then we start it, and now a kid gets sick on day 28. Now we have to go to the hospital. Now we have you know, family obligations. Now we ha and then we start making excuses of why the project wasn't as good as it could have been or why it didn't get done on time. And it's a vicious cycle. It's like this insidious cycle where we justify, rationalize, and all this stuff to say, no, I don't want to face my fear. So you mentioned being public speaker. So I'm going to kind of off of that topic a little bit. You mentioned you do a lot of public speaking. So was that ever a fear that you had to overcome for, to get up on stage and start public speaking? I was petrified of public speaking. So in high school, the teacher would say, OK, kids, you're going to memorize this poem tonight, and you're going to come in tomorrow and recite it in front of class. And I would get in front of class, and my knees would be knocking together, my stomach is doing backflips, and I'm looking at the students in the classroom, picking out the ones that look the most mean. Right? And I'm thinking, oh, he thinks I'm terrible. He thinks I'm, I'm going to bomb this. Oh, I can't. And my mind was all on those things. So of course I couldn't remember the poem. And the teacher's attitude would be something like, poor pathetic Joe, we know you can't do this. Have a seat. I never finished those assignments because I couldn't do them. I was so worried about what other people are thinking of me. And what I found out over time is that most people aren't thinking about you. Right? Most people aren't thinking nearly as much about you as you think they are. They're happy they're not the ones in front of the room. They're happy they don't have to do the assignment right? or be that person speaking. So I had a, a boss who said, you're going to go speak at this conference. And he made me speak. And it was a disaster. And then he made me do it again. And it was a little bit less of a disaster. And then he made me do it again. And finally, this is what I do for a living, which is very ironic. Because I was absolutely horrified about public speaking. Which is interesting to me. When, so if, some, if you're public speaking, and like what you said, they're probably not paying as much of attention as you want. But if you're a good public speaker, you'll get their attention. Right. So that's what you have to focus on for that. But here's the thing about public speaking. I don't want them thinking about me. I want to do such a great job that they're thinking about themselves, that they think about, how does this impact my life? So for example, I tell stories about my family, because I'm the ninth of 12 kids, big family. You know, Most people don't come across families like that. So I talk about my family. I talk about my family to get the audience thinking about their family, to think about themselves, about their failures, or their fears, or their procrastinations, or what are the things that they've been doing to sabotage themselves and therefore, they haven't been able to live the best life they've been able to live. So my job is to get them to shift. Shift just one degree their perception of themselves and what's possible. That's really the question, is what's possible? And if you think nothing's possible, then you're going to have certain choices and certain outcome. If you think things are possible, then you have different choices and different outcomes. That's great. I love that. I love to, just to get people thinking about themselves and how they they can improve. Anytime you improve, even like you said, if it's just that tiny little bit, that's amazing. So if somebody wanted to get your book and or get in touch with you or see what you're doing, where would they find you? They would find me at joeserio.com, J-O-E-S-E-R-I-O. They would find me uh, on email, joe at joeserio.com, free to email me. Uh, and, that's, and on Amazon, my books are all on Amazon. Uh, the Get the Nerve series. Was addresses fear, 
public speaking, time management, emotional intelligence, resilience and stress and other topics related to fear. That is very awesome. So on that note, I'll let you go home unless there's anything else you want to share because I know you want to get going. I think we're good. <laughs>